It's not exit holes. Because okay. you're still doing something that you love. Mm -hmm. And if it gets taken away, like we've all had loads of things taken away, yeah. then you start to really realise what you really love. Mm. Yeah, so it's it, for me personally... Oh, God, listen, this is some real, real <laughs> shit right here. Jesus Christ, keep going. <laughs> there is no exit strategies because if it is something that you love, then why would you want to exit it? But if it is also something that you love, why would you not want to evolve it to make your love go deeper? Killer Killer Podcast Killer Killer Official .com. <laughs> You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. Talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Turn on tuning a cop out. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast live and direct central London, as central as you need to be. Could be, wanna be, should be. You uh, definitely need to be. Hell yeah, you need this. to be, man. The uh, sultry voice you're hearing right now. Oh, big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Big shout out to everyone's got the television app. That sultry voice you're hearing right next to me is somebody that, for a, a lifetime of my career, we have uh, we have walked similar paths and is fucking exciting to him on because uh, he, his, his world is only blossoming here, there, and everywhere from hip hop to drum and bass to his own solo stuff. It's Inja! Yes, Kira. <laughs> yes, my darling. What are you Happy saying? To be here, bruv. Hey, that was an intro, oh, wasn't good. it? That was a wicked intro, man. Thank you. Yeah, you know, um, well, literally, I mean, it's a part of the kind of running commentary before we jump on a podcast uh, and we understand we've got to warm up before we're going to warm these vocal cords mm -hmm. up but uh, I did turn out injured didn't I and I was like yeah uh, you're used to that microphone what is it about microphones that you love, Inja? What is it? <sighs> um, it still perplexes me, but you can speak into something and plug it in and have it plugged into a big system and your voice comes out of it it's basic Basic. It's right. the, do you think, I mean, this is only relaying it back to our years and years of, but um, there is a persona that you have. Yeah. And there's a, um, that's, that's that Sasha Fierce that you go on stage with. There isn't a lot of difference between you and the, the positive energy that's on the stage and you behind the stage. That's <laughs> fact. <laughs> but, but there is something addictive about being on stage, isn't it? Regardless of what confidence you have, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, um, just to just to like backtrack, it's like even even when I was a kid and people would banish me from microphones, turn off my microphones, and I and I went through all of that stage of my life. I still kept on coming back. So there is an addictive <laughs> quality to it. There is something about it that has like an addictive nature. But then you know, like, let's break it down. Like, so like, uh, um. Basically, people people um, really like it when you get one person or a group of people on side, and a microphone is a way of getting people on side. Mm. Depending on what you're saying, depending on what environment you're with, um, and there is there is like self gratification in that. Like you can you can pick up a microphone as you well know and can control and be not necessarily control but be the conductor, be the influencer, be the person that can guide like a group of people mm. in whatever way, shape, or form. And yeah, it all comes down to this basic tool. It's bonkers, isn't it? Yeah, it's nuts. It's the disciplines that come within the idea of well, we've only got these record players, or we've only got this spray can wall, or we've you know we come from these disciplines, and it's mad that you kind of you create an arts an art form with something so. Yeah ever present in human ever since we've been born it's been there well bruv our voice our voice you know it's the basics it's like not many people had though or had families that had though that could get them turntables or studio equipment and all the rest of it so for me it was always just like the first go-to yeah. it's like my friends had some of that stuff which was amazing and i'd go around and play with them like on you know what i mean like and have a little fun but actually like the only tool that i've ever had is my voice and and that's like, you know, you, you you take away the microphone, just voice projection within itself. Mm. That's like that's like a big thing. And that's and that is part of the toolkit, I suppose, for any person that uses a mic, like especially with their vocal cords. Yeah. It's like, you know, and, and actually with instruments, you've got to learn first of all how to project that sound into the conductor that then takes it yeah. to wherever it takes it, sound systems, personal stereos, whatever. Mm. Like, but yeah. Interesting you've gone down that road because in conversation, uh, you've these are these are cheap to enter things, aren't they? Yeah. So, yeah. so when you're into a cheap to enter 
world of grab a mic and any mic and just do it. The 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 characteristics and vocals, like you say, and the the techniques in which you do, these are the most important elements. Or else it will it will um, it will you'll lose impact. It'll feel like oh anyone can do this, and it's just a, you know. Maybe there's a lot more anyone can do this is in the world these days, but I think with drum and bass and hip hop, it's like you you've really got to own your craft. With well, what you yeah, do. I mean, I mean, just just on that subject there about owning your craft, like anyone that watched the versus thing with the locks versus dipset, wow, like you know, like that was <laughs> that was anyone that hasn't. If you want to know how to hold a mic and what and and run a crowd, <laughs> go watch Jada and the Locks, man. <laughs> like, Game the fuck over. Like, but that was but that was pure that was pure. Um, Technique and skill. That was showmanship, technique, skill. All of the years of them guys as a group being together and how they have learned how to communicate, you know, because you know from from working with outfits, having your own outfits, like there is there is a communication bridge between everyone that's involved and the longer it evolves, it the, the, the communication bridge is so wide that actually you don't have to look at anyone. You don't even have to even be listening to what they're saying. Like, do you know what I'm saying? You don't, you don't, you don't even have to be listening to what anyone's you don't even doing. Have to like it's anymore. just it's just all it's, it goes through all of that, but it's all in sync yeah. because of the because of the time. And yeah. it's like you know, uh, I'm I'm a great advocate in the thousand hours, yeah. you know, and and like taking it back to the mics. It's like before before we had mics, we had our voices. Like you would have were you beatboxing before you had a mic? Yes, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So so you found the tool within you that you could be like, yo, this, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But actually, like, you know, it starts off with just like a group of friends and they're like, yeah, actually, nah, do that thing. Do that thing, bro. That's bruv. exactly how it works. That's, that's, that's how yes, it works, yes. isn't it? It's like, do that thing. And that's the same with me. It was like, you know, like mm. everyone else was on the turntables or whatever, or we were out on, out on road and man was beatboxing. And they were mm. like, say, some, say yeah, something, yeah. bruv. Say, come on, say something. Yeah, and it's yeah. like... But then, but they're like they're the basics of it, and it's like gutter rule. Yeah, the gutter rule, bro. And actually, it doesn't matter like what tools you have or what background you've come from. It's all it's, it's all it's dedication, fam. Yeah, it's dedication because you could have stopped and been like, no, nah, actually, I'm bored of that. I want to do something mm. else. But there was something exciting mm. in it, like, and that brings you, and that brings us back to that, that whole sort of like being on stage and like the addictive factor of it. That's where it started. Started for me in a car park, like, like on the stairs in the car park with all the gang and we're having a little smoke and then man started beatboxing. It's just like, yeah, <laughs> jump in. Do you know what I'm saying? But it was like, I knew like that, that, that I couldn't do the beatboxing thing. Mm. That, I mean, I tried because we all go through like, you know, you try everything. And I was like, nah, and it was like, you know, like the guy that was there was so good that it was like, no, man can just rap. Bang, bang, like, off we yeah, go. Yeah, and that's, you know, it's the basics. It fight or flight, it's that feeling of whether you're on stage, there's an emerge. Um, the consistency and why you do your thing isn't just the emergency on stage, it's the emergency behind it. It's like, I haven't got anything else. Yeah. you got to keep going. Yeah. And you love what you do. Yeah. You take it seriously as a job, innit? But it, at the same time, you know that it isn't. Yeah, and you've got to have fun. Yeah. Like, from when you stop having fun, that's when you've got to hang up whatever you're, whatever you're hanging in. Yeah. Like, when you stop having fun, hang up whatever you're hanging in. Yeah. Like, because once the fun stops, it's like, actually, like, you know... Well, you get some gems this, this episode, boy. But, but, that's, but that's one of the things, though, isn't it? It's yeah. like, it's like you know, all the people that I've um, worked in and around, like, and I have so much love for everyone that has been with me on my journey and my path and all the paths that I've entwined with. And every one of them, we could all link again at some point there's never no issues but it's like it's that whole thing of being being somewhere and it, like half the time it's not even about like impressing the people that you don't know like for me jumping on stage with a load of people that i've never seen before mm. that's a minor yeah yeah yeah, like, yeah. but when one of the man then pops up <laughs> it's like oh yeah better come with some goods which actually brings it back to the car park of yeah. when i was in the listen if you said something rubbish everyone would shut you down it's the car park of life baby do you know what i'm saying no but that's what it is like that's what it is and it's like and uh, but also that's where that's where the joy comes from that's where the the eagerness to try it again and want to do it again and want to better yourself because everything is is always evolution mm. and if you stop evolving then you need to stop like and you've like you know i look at it like this like 
um, every five years, there's got to be some kind of personal or self evolution in whatever it, in whatever way it comes good through. Whether bad, it's right? good or bad, it yeah, don't matter. Yeah. There has to like you know because if you're you can get sort of like um, trapped in the spiral of something and then like, you know, and it can be the most amazing thing ever. It could be the biggest thing ever. But actually, like after five years, that's where you need to show some kind of evolution to yourself personally or your craft and what you're doing because then that's how you move forward again to keep yourself to keep yourself active and explain to explain keep... the theory on that a bit more so because this is, sounds like something you've definitely considered over time oh it's something that I've thought about and looked back over and been like oh yeah I've, I've actually done that like I've been doing that before I even knew what it was I was like oh right yeah yeah, I have, like, it has worked out roughly like that. So basically like um, the way I see things is everything has like a five year timeline so, so from the start of something really really kicking off and really working like you got five years to capitalise yeah, because after that five years, like whoever the crowds, the audience, whatever the people that are into you, the diehards, all the rest of it, like everyone evolves. Mm. Yeah, like and just because you evolve, that doesn't mean you don't like what you liked back then. Mm. But actually, like, you know, you want to see like you want to see someone grow with how you're growing and how life, because life change, life don't stay the same, bro. Mm. Like everything, every, everything grows and it's all at evolution. So if you can, if you can help yourself and make them tiny steps to evolve in whatever way, shape mm. or form, like then, then that keeps you in a consistent realm where you can like consistently work because the way I see it is, I ain't got nothing else other than my voice. Mm -hmm. Like, rubbish with my hands, apart from with the gallon, but that's a different matter. <laughs> like, but like, other than that, like, you know, I, I don't, do man <laughs> don't do manual labours and all of them things. Like, it's like, you know, I, I, have, I have no education. Like, um, so, so I have to, I have to always look on it like, yeah, like what's going to be the next steps of evolution? And, a lot of the times, you don't know how you're going to do it, but there'll be something that, that clicks and be like, oh, I'm going to start experimenting with this or I'm going to bring in this technique now mm. because I've kind of mastered this technique. Because when you do something for five years, after three years, you're pretty damn homed in on it. Mm, like, yeah. by the third year, it's seamless. It's seamless. It's seamless. By the fourth year, it's seamless, but then you get into monotony and it starts getting a little bit boring because it's so, it's easy. Mm. It's light work. Like, but and then, and then by the fifth year, yeah, you're still smashing it. But actually, if you're not in a realm where you're ready to evolve, then you'll start to see things, like, leaving. And you'll start to see yeah. parts, like, going in whatever way they go. It, part, okay, so, okay, well, this is... Because when we talk about evolution here, you know, <laughs> early adopted UK hip-hop, I would go as far as to say it's veteran compared to, you know, from yeah, back in the day. Been there. Mixtapes, albums, you know, and then, you know, falling into the DMC world of hosting and hyping and, yeah. and, and now King of the Rollers... When you when you forecast this five year um, period, um, is it during the, that four to five years that you look for kind of exit holes or strategy or? Um... That's where you start strategizing. Yeah. It's not exit holes because okay. you're still doing something that you love, mm -hmm. and if it gets taken away, like we've all had loads of things taken away, yeah. then you start to really realize what you really love. Mm. Yeah. So it's it, for me personally. Oh, God, listen, this is some real real <laughs> shit right here. Jesus Christ, keep going. <laughs> for, me, for me personally, um, there is there is no exit strategies because if it is something that you love, then why would you want to exit it? But if it is also something that you love, why would you not want to evolve it to make your love go deeper? Mm. Mm. You know, because because like that's what it is. It's it, it's like come on with with you the personal evolution with you. Mm. Like yeah, you started off beatboxer microphone, mm. and then and then where did it go? You went you done you done everything, bro. <laughs> like but all at different stages, mm. never all at once, but all at different stages. Yeah. And every time you you sort of you found one of these new stages, did that first time excitement and energy not just overwhelm you yeah, yeah, yeah. and it just was just like man's electric again it's like oh there's something like I yeah. haven't got a full grip on this yeah 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 yeah, yeah exactly and I want to try it yeah thousand percent actually funnily you mentioned this because I think the last time we saw each other was at the DMC World Champion big shout out to my DMC crew yes love to the Sally all and day. all the gang all the day. Sally you know the salute Steve darling Sally. <laughs> um, not to mention all the people that support and represent every year worldwide bonkers, bonkers. it's mad but uh 
you know, those, those audience don't pull no punches. And I remember going on stage on that one particular event and, you know, standard business, you know what I mean? It's like there's a lot of chin stroking in the crowd, a lot of boozers in the crowd, people have had a drink and you've really got to show and prove. Oh, oh, but that's, but that's the raw yeah. essence. Yeah, when yeah, you're yeah. in that place, it's like, that's go, the go, essence. Go, 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 go. I, I definitely walked away um, after that particular round of, of gig and I, and I thought to myself, you know what? there's a wind of change happening because it wasn't that, I don't know, I wouldn't want to speak for the audience and I certainly, you know, wouldn't want to speak for the members of the crew. There were certain things that in my mind I was like, yo, this has to switch up. It just has to switch the fuck up. And that came this, you know, and all this sort of but stuff. That's what happens. You get yeah. their moments where you're like, okay, like, I love what I'm doing. I didn't enjoy that as much. Mm. Like, what can I do next? Like, how can I incorporate everything that I've learned? Because, like, ultimately, we have, we have, for years, we have traded our blood, sweat and tear to a craft. Mm. Like, whichever way you look at it, like, whatever, like, you know, like, all of them, all of that time, that is... That is valuable time. And for me, that's why I see everything as it has to evolve because I don't want to throw away any of that time because mm. I've loved all of that time. I've loved I've loved every part of my journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. every part, the ups and downs, I've loved every part of the journey because it wouldn't be a journey without every part. Yo. Do you know what I'm saying? Real like, talk. But also at the same time, I'd never want to... I'd never want to uh, banish myself, dismiss any part of the journey mm. because it's all, it's all like calibrated and it's all coagulated to make me what I am now. Yeah. Like, you know, it's yeah. like, like if I'd have missed any parts of the journey, then we wouldn't be sitting here. No. Like, and, and, and like every, every time there's been a slight evolution, every time there's been like, oh, do you know what? That weren't the one. Or, or like when it's got to the point with people that you're working with and it's like, well, we've kind of got to call it a day. We're not calling it a day, but we're going to, mm. like, everyone wants to evolve and everyone wants to move forward mm. in their own light and in their own way. Mm. And like, I've never had any resentments or any issues with anyone, like, in them circumstances. Because I'm like... As long as you do something that makes you happy, mm. like that's that's what matters. Mm. Like whether you like if you're no longer happy with the surroundings and the group, then take yourself out of that and find what makes you happy. Mm. And then at some point, once you do clock, oh yeah, actually this makes me happy. Then all of a sudden, you might start ringing up the man name and being like, yeah, do you know what? <laughs> like if you're into it, I know it's a bit different yeah. now, but if you're into it, do you want to come and there slide on this and see if you can catch a vibe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, dude, listen, you and me. We've, we've come from the same paddock of, of integrity and, and career space. Dude, you're kind of, we, we share similar now in that, in that you know, your journey, you, you're collecting newer, fresher eyes and ears and audiences. There's people that watch this day and you've got a clue what I did back in the day. To have this conversation yeah, now, yeah, people yeah. are just like, what? What but, is he talking about? Who's that you've got you've, with you, Kel? You've got <laughs> audience that are the same, innit? Like, I, I put you in a high... high Praise in the same place as Skibidi and Harry Shutter and all these kind of yeah. characters that um, that are now gracing the stage on a on a level of they know hip hop they grew up in it but they also do this really yeah. well yeah. and uh, that's new eyes and ears and um, had you not done that transition so or rather betted on the right horse of a of a project to get on um, as organically as it could be perceived it's like yo that's sick because now you've got a whole new well got a whole new vibe but that's also the thing like that's also the part of evolution and that's evolution with sound or with people or with an environment if you haven't got um young people coming in then actually what happens is it ends up spiraling down and not continuing mm -hmm. like like not every like that's that's like the main thing about evolution because in that five year period all of them people that are there like you know by the time that like the five years is nearly up you know they they might they can be completely different people mm -hmm. to the ones that like first clocked on in that first five years so actually like if you're not continually trying to bring in people trying to show love to the new up and coming people and everything like it's like then like you to me that means that you want to go down with the ship and i don't want the ship to go down brother i want like and it doesn't like i don't care for for me personally in that factor all these environments that i've been in and that i've come from 
Like essentially, I was I was a little flipping like b boy kid without really knowing I was a b boy kid because all of my older cousins were actual b boys, but I wasn't. I was too little. But actually, that mentality and that mindset was always there. And then, like you know, it's where I get like a bit. It's where I get a bit like disappointed with um, you know some diehard people that are like, yeah, no, it has to be like this, and it has to. It always has to be like this, and this is the only thing, and this is the only way. And actually, it's not. Yeah. It's not because because for evolution and for things to move forward, you have to you have to be open to everyone and everything, mm. and every at every step of the way, like you know, yeah. It, it, I mean, it makes me laugh sometimes. Some of the things that I see, so the way that some of the he's go on, like, mm. and I'm like, right, that's mad, and like, <laughs> and like, I'll have conversations with people, and they're like, no, nah, that's not right. Someone needs to tell him, and I'm like, bro. If someone turned around and told me, mm. I'd have told them where to go, bro. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'd have told can't them tell all people the, shit, like man. you can't tell people nothing. But if they're there and they're enjoying it, that's all you want. Mm. That means that it lives. Yeah. That means it lives, man. Mm. Like from when you from when you turn up at a place and it's just like you've just got like the stereotypical crowd that you've been seeing for five years and like, you know, it's getting smaller because they're all going off their ways, but you're not getting the young ones coming in to replace mm -hmm. them. Then like, you need to find a way to evolve. Yeah. You've got to find a, you're in the wrong seat, aren't you? Yeah. You, are, you are in the wrong seat. You are in the wrong seat because it's all evolution. Like, and it is evolution and, and we all evolve, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I, 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 have, I have every utmost respect for everything in my past mm. that's led me up to here because I wouldn't be what I am without all of that. But mm. at the same time, like, as, as humans, as, as, as an existence, as an entity in this planet, our whole thing is to evolve. Mm. Like, and we have to. And if we're not evolving, then what are we doing? Give me someone that you'd say of an age maybe older than us that you'd feel is killer, is doing that right, that evolution Rodney right. Rodney P, always. Okay. Like, straight out, salute to Rodney. Mm. <laughs> like, like, Rodney P, I, I, I heard his voice when I was a kid, mm. and I was like, rah, these are the first people with an English accent mm -hmm. I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. Like, I was little, little. People like, forget that them, them um, Demon Boys, and maybe yeah, 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 they're Demon the only Boys ones. as well, like, them man there, Demon Boys, like, Rodney, like, big up Millie and Dan, like... Oh, do you know oh, what I'm saying? Me and Dan, come on. Like, but, like, but, but, yeah, but, but them guys, like, you know, Rodney in particular, um, he has always evolved. And, like, yes, he is, like, that's original B-boy territory. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. original. You, no one can tell me nothing, but Rodney, original, salute. Covent like, Garden, boom. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the original flipping, like, uh, DNA strand. Mm. But then you've seen him work with all of the hip hop people you've seen him work with oh, dub pistols like, and dub that, yeah. pistols like every like like if Rodney's in a vibes mm. and your ting's bringing a vibe Rodney's on your vibe yeah yeah yeah, 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 like, yeah. but that's but that's also that shows you that my man's not there is no fear of evolution no. and there is no fear of he has he has in my eyes like you know because I don't I don't see him that often to speak to but in my eyes it it seems like my man is so happy and at one with himself that he's like, let's try a thing. Like, is it fun? Mm. Yeah. All right. <laughs> like, do you think though that because you're right, thousand percent? But I think with Rodney, I think the reason why I, I'm guessing why he remains consistent and relevant is because his mission brief hasn't changed. He's 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 got a mission brief. It's like he speaks for a, uh, a, a a minority. He speaks for UK rap. He speaks for people that are tired of the American accent. He speaks for the youth that he was once that need to come up. I think it's all these different things come into play, but don't they, they? But, but then that's someone who's never ignored their past to mm. move forward. Because mm. there are some people that have tried to lock off like what they've been a part of so they can move forward and it might work for a short spell. But it dies But quick. then, yeah, it dies real far. Well, how many times have you seen it? I, I, <laughs> it can't I, count. I thought of someone as you were saying it. Yeah, you know I mean? do you know what I'm saying? Lot, like, yeah. like seen it, we've seen it relentlessly. But then with people yeah. like him, it's like... He is a vibes man. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Like, like, man, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen him and Skits pour out of flipping more, so much JD in people's faces at front of stages. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't matter whether it's from the first time I see yeah. them to the last time I see them. Like, like, like they're still shit. doing it. Yeah. And like, even the ones that might not know who they are that are seeing these two absolutely kill it with vibes, charisma, yeah. style, lingua, everything. When they're seeing that, they're instantly drawn to it because it's entertaining. Yeah. And then the fact that my man can interact like on a level that that just brings everyone in like 
it's 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 why like yeah. I don't ever expect to never not see like Rodney mm. in places mm -hmm. like you know maybe not yeah. as often as as like it, it once was yeah. but he's still about and he's still there and and at various big things and versatile as well and the voice bruv like yeah. apart from all of Hold. that let's 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 go back has, to the raw down. essence of him the voice like you know I'll be honest with some people I don't even care what they say I just like listening to their tone of voice. <laughs> like, Bruce Maneuver's another one like that. Yeah. Like, yeah wow. Yeah. yeah. Like, bro, voice. there's loads of them. Mm. But it's like, you know, like with, with, with Rodney, because like, you know, yeah. that's, that's like original, like, and you can see my man has evolved every single yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's kept it moving, yeah. which is like, that's a quote from him probably. <laughs> yeah. like, it sounds Rodney. like it. Like, yeah, yeah, he's kept it moving, mm. like, which is what it's about. Yeah. Like, and for when you stop and, like, just go a bit stagnant, that's when things don't move, man. Yeah, that's where things stop. And how can things run if they ain't moving? It's funny you bring up Rodney on a vibes, because, um, was it important justifies? Mm. Importance never justifies anything. There you go. Right, so this is the vibe right here. And again, if you're just <laughs> clocking into Inja and the versatilities and energy of the man, I mean, geez, that, that is, a, is a running commentary there um, that, you bring to the stage, and I said to the, at the start, you know, it's vibes, but it's funny you, you mentioned Rodney in such a, in a detailed way because actually kind of mirrors you. That vibe, the energy, the essence, mm. like you've always bought a positive flip on anything, whether it's Instagram, whether it's COVID, anything, you just flip it. Mm. But then but then that's, that's um, I'm one of their kids. Let's be real. Yeah. Let's be yeah. real. Their man, yeah. their DNA yeah. runs through, through me. Yeah. <laughs> like, it runs yeah, yeah, through yeah. us, yeah, bro. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. I am one of their kids. So it's like, you know, like whenever anyone starts anything, um, it generally starts out of imitation for what you're seeing and what you're really enjoying. Mm. And it's and it's and it's complete imitation. And then if you get past and over the imitation phase, then that's where it starts to actually like you start to find your own style. Mm. But then but then with that own style, like, you know, in my head, I even ring up people. Yeah. I ring up people, like I'm not even like I'm not mentioning no names, but I was writing a song. And I wrote this song, um, for uh, my latest album, actually. I wrote this song for it. And, like, I'm listening back to it now. I've recorded it, listening back. I'm loving it. And I'm like, rah, but I feel like I'm doing my man's flow. Like, straight, like, because because for me, like, I've come, I'm, I'm flipping, I'm a B-boy baby. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and biting is not, it, that does not come in. That's, that's oh. there is there is none of that. None of yeah? that. Yeah. So to the point where I'm listening to the thing now so much, yeah, I've rung up the dude who I think whose flow I'm like I'm like bruv, I've done this thing yeah I'm sorry and he's like no no for real for real I've done this thing and like I need you to listen to it because I think I've jacked yours and my man's flow in it oh, and he was so like sick that you've done that bruv, because I'm real yeah, yeah I'm real and I was like I, like I need you to either give me a forward or tell me to pull it bro yeah 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 because yeah. I really like it but I'm in a really confused place right now yeah because in my head all I'm hearing is you man mm. what did yeah? you say what did you say bro I sent it to him. He rang me back. He was like, Inch, love the ting. I don't think so whatsoever. Oh, like, right. that's all you. And I was like, do you know Lessons. what? Thank you. And do you know how much respect my man shows me? Like, like he always showed me respect before then. But he was like, bruv, no one's ever done that. And the amount of people that bite my style mm. and bite my tings, yeah? And yet you've sat down, you've written a song. Love you've that. You've thought about it and then you've gone, no, nah, I need to ring up my man. There's a lot of people out there who need to be doing that with certain people. That's what I'm saying. Real talk, like, yeah. you know, and also as well, if you do, if you do go, because like I class these people as like the gods, as the owners, like, you know, because they're the people that I always looked up to and they're the people that still inspire mm. me. Like, and from when you can reach out to them and just be like, you know, like, just be honest and yeah. be like, yeah, I've done a thing. Like... I don't want it to come out. Mm. And then you ring me up like, yo, fam, like you, you biting my oh, things right my there. Worst life. Do you oh know what I'm God. saying? Because I've seen people do that and like, and like, nah, they don't live good after that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't live good they after that. They rattle when they walk. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, you know, like to be able to do that, mm. like, and yeah, it takes, it takes a lot of courage mm. and like, but if your energy and yourself is in the right place, then it ain't an issue. Mm. Cause like, you know, I know some people get so precious about songs and I'm like, it's just a song. Because mm -hmm. mm. the writers that I was brought up with, it's just like, well, boy, if my man's like, nah, you have to pull that. I'm like, yeah, no qualms. Mm. That's a minor. Like, like, cause, cause like the whole thing is, is we move forward and we keep it moving. Mm. 
Like you have to like if you're if you, any any kind of stagnation, like that's when that's when things fall apart. He's right, and you're right. <laughs> um, progression. Uh, somebody, you know, there's no right or wrong way of making music. There's moral. There's moral um, boundaries which you set yourself, and that's yeah. a clear moral moral yeah. boundary that Completely. I think should be tra trans translated to a lot of different people and, and places. But um, with with the eve of certain technological advances on social media and whatnot, there is an impatience. Even I have it. We all have it. It's like let's post it now. Let's get our sound now. Let's get a song out now. Yeah. And, and you talk about the hours that you put in and the organicness of being in a car park and just vibing. You don't have to have the camera on, you know. Like, you can just do it. Yeah. Find those special moments and develop it. Do you think there's enough of that going on? Do you think people... I mean, I wouldn't want to take you to a negative place. You'll probably yeah. tell me to shut up. But do you think that there is a, a, a time right now where uh, quality over quantity... Oh, definitely, and I think a lot of people lack patience. Mm. Like, nothing negative about it. Mm. I get it, I love the enthusiasm mm. and all the rest of it, but I think patience is like, a, like you know, like the statements is, patience is a virtue. Mm. And if you can um, if you can hold your ground and and not be flipping gaslit and gassed by all the people around you to actually, like, do it, it's like you'll probably find you'll get a better outcome. Mm. But I get the impatience. Mm. Like, I get that. Like, you know, we've all done that. Oh, my God, I've made this thing right. I've got to get it out somehow. Rah, rah, rah. And then when you've gone through the process so quick to actually get it, it never really works mm. to the full potential that it could. Mm. Because, because patience is like, you know, everything takes time. And I get it. Some people ain't got patience, but... If you haven't got patience, at some point something will educate you and something will teach you patience, whether you want it or not. Whether you want it or not. <gasps> it's truth. Yeah. Whether you want it or not. Like, like that, that, that road will come and that road will have to be crossed at some point. Yeah. Whether you want to cross it or not, but something will come up that will that will make you ease back and just like, you know, mm. be like, okay. Right, yeah, all right. Mm. I need to not be, not necessarily not so eager, but maybe not so forceful and pushy with how you want to do something. <laughs> the teachings will be taught eventually, basically. <laughs> they, they, it is, it is though. It is because, you know, we all have to learn. And it's like, you know, like being flipping of Jamaican, like heritage, like one of the things that I've always like, that's always in my mind whenever like we're in these kind of conversations is those that can't hear will feel. And if you're not listening at some point, you're going to feel it. And if you ain't got patience at some point, something's going to teach you and it's going to hurt. <laughs> Oh, like, what's it like in your home? I mean, this is some <laughs> shit right here. We're like, what, what's well, your family environment? What's the, talk to me about your environment. Um, like, what leads to these? These aren't. These aren't just. These are well crafted. Uh, this is well crafted commentary, and I want to know how you get to these moments. I mean, I think just like you know, like I'm I'm a, I'm a single dad. I have my child a few days a week. Um, I genuinely, outside of work and outside of coming to do wicked things like this <laughs> and just chat with gang, like, um, I'm very solitude. And um, it's not that I like... I mean, we all can be overthinkers, but it's also I like um, my own space and time so then I can not be influenced mm. because I, I can only be my own influence. And it's very easy to get caught up in some things like, you know, like, geez, as much as I'm like, yeah, I don't like to be. Fam, when I'm with certain people <laughs> and, like, the vibes is right, <laughs> anything can happen. Round them up. Danger. Going... <laughs> danger, bro. It's dangerous. <laughs> but, like, at the same time, it's like, you know, I try to... I don't know. I just yeah. I don't know. Just um, I was I was I was brought up well, man. I was brought up by a load of flipping, like like my family, both sides of them. Like they are lovely and amazing, but there is there is no shit taking, like and there is there is like there ain't no space for mistakes, like and if you do, then you have to feel it so you learn so you don't do it mm. again. But like there isn't any place for it, but everyone is happy for you to make them as long as you're learning. Like, because you can't teach someone something, they have to... You can teach... A st no, let me start that again. You can teach up to a certain point, but that's just words, and that is essentially someone else's opinion. And mm. until you find yourself in a way where you can actually live that and actually really feel it, that's the only time where you'll ever really get a grasp on it. Real life, rather than... Real I mean, life! Big up to university crews, and big up to the single dads as well, looking after the... Um, looking after their boys and their daughters. And the mums too, man. Yeah. Everyone, like, it ain't yeah. easy. Yeah, for sure. 100%. 100%. Um, yeah. 
you've got to go through that path, yeah. essentially. And do you ever think, though, with with um, with the creative arts and, like you say, ex- face that journey, face that journey, hmm. um, the arts are fraught sometimes with, you know, that balancing act of monetizing and being creative. Like what mm-hmm. we're talking about here a lot is, is the creative process, but to a lot of people that have, you know, got their nine to five jobs and are trying to look after their own, the idea of going quote unquote self-employed and doing what we've essentially done is it doesn't even have them thinking about it's a risk yeah it's a massive risk it's a massive risk you know like my advice to anyone i've always been like if you've got something in the creative field it doesn't matter what it is like and it doesn't matter how good you become at it like always have a job Mm-hmm. Like, you know, always always have something that's going to pay your rent. Because if you mm. want to rely on yeah. something to pay your rent, you're going to end up hating it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're going to end up hating it. Yeah. Like, you know, it's why it's why we have, we work out ways and we're always plotting and scheming on ways mm. that we can flip and make sure the bills are all paid mm. and then still go out and do what we do. And then, like, if you're fortunate enough, at some point, it'll get to the point where you'll have to make a choice. Mm-hmm. Like and then when you yeah. go to make that choice, you have to think it through thoroughly yeah. because it's not a it's not an easy decision. No. Like and actually, like uh, from when you make that decision, and this is all from my experience. As soon as you make that decision, like whatever side you choose, um, it, there's gonna be a lull because you're you're gonna go through a time of self doubt because you've made a decision and you've had oh, to choose an option. So you're yeah and. You feel suspended in a, yeah. in a, in a place yeah. where you're like, oh, I've just let go of my last yeah. line and yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in the air. Yeah. yeah, like, you know, but then if you can still have patience, mm. like, eventually, and, and you work hard at it and you show dedication, it will come through. But, like, you know, I've always said to people, I'm like, yeah, just, like, just make sure you've got something. Mm. Like, make sure you've got something. Like, it's, it's, it's one of them age-old things, isn't it? Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. Until you know it's your basket and you can carry that basket and you making sure that basket's always full, mm. like, do what you can do. And, bruv, if you've got to go to seven different supermarkets to fill your basket, go to seven different supermarkets until you can open up your own thing, mm. like, mm. like sh- shop everywhere. So in terms of seven different supermarkets, um, as the analogy, you, because you are, in my mind, you're hip-hop, constant host, you're an album releaser, mixtape, savage, beast, MC, dropping of bars. Yeah. You know, you're you know, you're the junk you're the junction in Cambridge. You're yeah. you're um yeah, what's it called? Um organic organic. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Um, Wicked times. Yeah, come Wicked on. Wicked times, man. Oh, recesses of my mind. Um, but then you're drum and bass as well. Yeah. And you know, even those three or four things I've just listed is only like a small part, but these are like sh- supermarkets that yeah. you're just kind of redirecting attention to and 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 keeping the plate spinning, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you prefer? Um, I love them all. It's vibes. It's vibes. Like I, lo- I love, I love vibes to the point where I rung up um, one of the um, boys the other day who was going out to do his first show post having a baby, and I rung up his um, DJ and and like his sort of like management, and I was like, "Yo, I heard he's going to do a show. Like, where is it? And can I just roll in?" And they were like. Right, what you just want to roll through? I'm like, yeah, I just want to come because I know it's going to be vibes, isn't it? Oh and then my it God. and then it turned out that I couldn't go. But then like, I was speaking to the guy last week and he was like, "Bruv, you were early on it." And I was like, "What do you mean?" And he was like, "I don't get it with you, but you were the first person to ring me, being like, bruv, get me a hotel. I want to come. Like, I'm paying for the hotel, whatever. Like, I just wanted to come and catch some vibes. And like, and like, this was a hip hop thing." This was a straight up hip hop thing. And I was like, oh, I'm gutted. I couldn't get a sitter, so I couldn't go. Like, and he was like, bruv, like a week after you called, I ended up getting like two or three carloads of people that wanted to come up because they obviously knew it was a vibe, but you were on that so early. Mm-hmm. Like you were you were the first one out of the gate. Far as seat and you like, see, come on. But like, but like that's the thing. For me, it's all vibes. Mm-hmm. Like, and and like I love I love the vibes. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I come from like the the hip hop lyricist background, you know, like as like 
get into flipping, go round to flipping Napa and Life's house, like, because cause they cipher. lived in for Life Cypher, do you know yeah. what I mean? Because they on. lived in Luton, and that's where I'm originally from, and they're from the same estate where I was born and raised on. So it was like, to go and see them, that was amazing. To go Highbury Estate and go yeah. hang out with Task Force for all the years that I had, like, all of these people, that, that was like yeah. some serious training. Yeah. Like, and just being around them, like, and they were all so lovely. Yeah. Their families, everyone mm. just took man in, like it was like nothing but then what I everything that I've learned and all the info and the intel that I gathered from all of these amazing writers mm. like because they are amazing writers yeah, yeah. and wow. like all of that is all part of my journey and that's partly what makes me who I am now you know it's yeah. all of like like if if you go back and look through all of the DNA strands mm. it, my DNA strands go from like hip hop to dance music to reggae to grime to garage like mm. I love I just love things with vibes like mm. or you could find me flipping like a, a random jazz festival the other side of the world freestyling with jazz musicians mm. because it's fun yeah, yeah. like find me at Ronnie Scott's like every year or two just jamming with the band because they because we have we catch jokes and they're like yeah man can spin it so like come through yeah it's been a while since you've been you've got to come through can you come i'm like yeah cool it's vibes do you drink yeah sometimes do you smoke a little bit i can't imagine you'd need any of that it's nah. just you're in <laughs> yeah pretty much pretty much like um yeah i don't smoke i smoke more cigarettes than i smoke anything else drinks wise um Probably in the last two months, I've had one occasion where I've drunk, and that was when, like, I went to see like some proper gang, and I was like, yeah, got given a bottle of champagne, and I was like, right, turned up at the gang house, I was like, right, we're having a drink, yeah, like, we're that in the freezer for twenty <laughs> minutes, like, yeah, Just let's have a, do you know what I mean? Like, it's all time and a place mm. for me. You 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 cited some heavy hitters there in the in the genre, the UK hip hop, early UK hip hop genre, which is still prevalent now as, yeah, as artists. Um, the, the training ground that you know oh man oh god i couldn't just remember it that just the the levels of it was like athleticism brother it was athletic athleticism times being in a ball pit because if you couldn't hold it you were off bro <laughs> yeah. rick shored off bro rick yeah. shore him out like <laughs> straight up and that's like but then but then that's that i think is one of the cutthroat things that i think um is missing at the minute. Yeah, I agree. Because, I, because, like, you know, like, outside of, like, the locks and, like, watching that... Oh, my God. Like, that's the first time I've seen... Um, and, you know, there probably right. is is more than that, but that's the first time I'd seen American artists for a while Have it. actually just rap on their instrumentals. Yeah. Like, I don't mind the choruses being in there, but when you've got your verses and your bars, like, people singing over their own songs. Yeah. That is karaoke fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't do that. Like, because actually, like, what I was brought up in, like, mm. imagine, imagine down at Kung Fu and all them places, man jumped up and just sang over his song. Me. Like, bro, what? <laughs> but this should be, like, simpler shit. I mean, my boy, the whole type of people with documents, he was telling stories of, like, how, you know, Rakim got booed off, LL Cool J got booed off the stage because they were back in the 80s. Like, this is, like, a repeat of the history that's gone. It's like, have you not learned? <laughs> have you not learned? No, but, no, but also, yeah. it's not necessarily that, that they haven't learned, but it's, like... A lot of the young ones, because you can't, um, you can't tell them off for not learning and not being educated. You can only show them mm. and be like, "Nah, but check this, and this is how it, this is how it can be." Mm. But like, there's, there's, there's not many examples um, that are showing them. Actually, you can just run the instrumental and wrap your thing. Do you think? Look, I mean, there is URL. Hold tight, the URL. Don't yeah. flock crew. And I mean, yeah. listen. Although some of the, well, a lot of the bars are pre-written, there is a technique to that which is a lot standalone. Is like madness. Oh, mate, I think it's a mate. Like it's, it's not. It's not. It's not my personal preference. Yeah. But on an art perspective, you get it. I think it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I get it, like, mm. completely. Like, it's never something that I would want to get involved in because it's not really me and I don't have the memory capacity to remember anything without yeah. a musical structure behind it. Yeah. Like, but salute, man. That is art. It's big time. It's big time. art, man. To be able to, what, stand there, remember God knows how many verses that you've written. Mm. 
not even just remember them, but execute them. Mm. Like, because it's all about the execution. Mm -hmm. Like, know how to execute them in that way. Mm. Like, and like, you know. Like, they, they'll real. clock you. They'll clock you if you stumble as well. Yeah, they'll have you. Like, it's a hostile environment. <laughs> it's not as hostile as as like battle rap that like originates yeah. from, but it's still a hostile mm. environment. Mm. Yeah? yeah, and it's like yeah, seeing that, and it's like hats off to them. Yeah, like like you know, I've had people talk to me about them, and like people talk about their grievances with it and all the rest of it, and I'm like, mm. you can have all of that, yeah. but is it bringing? Young people in. That's right, and that's what it I, is. It's yeah. ticking all the boxes. Yeah. Then, like, yeah. I don't have to be fully into it, but if I can see the vibe I'm with it, and I can catch vibes, I'm with it. I'm a, wholeheartedly with you. It's the same with the beatbox culture, the DJ culture. Mm. Anything that's that that needs a, a lift, that normally derives from technology. But a lot of it is like, well, are you ready for the next generation? Yeah. That's the real question, yeah. isn't it? And that is, and in mm. some and in some fields, some people aren't because they block that stuff off. But actually, it gets to the point where when you find them ones that actually just love it because they love it, they build their own thing. Yeah, you end up and then, and, then, way, yeah. and then you end up got like the original thing here and then you've got these new kids that have then built a thing and they're, they're not connecting because like, you know, you've got the originals that yeah, are like, yeah, yeah. nah, not really. You're like, yeah, yeah. like, nah, this isn't how it should be. But actually like, the new ones are evolving it. Yeah, that's and right. And like, and like, regardless of whether the people before them are into it or not, just by people listening to them, at some point they might go back and they be will. like, "Who was before this?" That's right, because that's what happens. Or something might Always come happens. up. Or like, or like, you know, one of the new kids might get gassed and flipping, get mm. one of their favorites. Yeah, and then and then like all of these new kids are like, "Oh my god, who's this new guy that I've never heard yeah, before?" Yeah, yeah. Only to then realize, "Oh wow, this guy is essentially the father of the guy that I like." Truth, because because listening back to like. Going back, I can hear like where the person that I like has actually come from now. Yeah, we we have that in many cases as onlookers seeing younger artists come from. I mean, like I'm almost certain T Pain is is waiting for a resurgence in in terms of well, the fact getting AJ Tracy's just had him on a song that's now go, I'm boom. hearing on the radio there all the go, time. Boom. There you go. Back to the original person, the source, and that, and he was a you know, regardless of the, the you know, the auto tune, he, it he, s he sang too. He was like, a... he can uh, listen, yeah. When they actually really first heard him sing, they can believe it. They were like, what the, the yeah. fuck? What was it? He done a, uh, a NPR, innit? Yeah, he done an NPR, no auto tune, bang. No, like, I got sent it by like, I don't know, it's either my sister or one of my friends, and they were like, yo, you watch T Pain, this. and I'm watching <laughs> it, and I'm like, raw. Like, but the thing is, as well, what a lot of people don't really get about auto-tune is to be able to use auto-tune and to manipulate it to the point where, like, you can have all of them cadences that it has in it, you have to understand how to sing. Mm. You can't just be a bad singer. Mm. Like, because to actually get them notes that they, that, that like, you know, like, yeah. however it works, you actually have to have some knowledge for it. That's right. So if you're, like, you know... I could be the worst singer in the world, jump on auto-tune. I could never make anything like T-Pain. Mm. Like, T-Pain had to have had knowledge yeah. before someone was like, yo, bruv, what happens when I flick this mm. switch? And they're all like, do you know what? That's really mad, but I like mm. it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And that's how that's how it works. It's, it's finding those mm. zeitgeist moments of like, yeah. and it changes the dynamic of a whole, the whole scene. Game. It changed the whole game. That changed the whole game, man. Like, auto-tune before T-Pain, as far as I'm aware of it, Nothing. was just used in really big studios to correct people's, yeah. like, like tiny little mistakes, like which is all yeah. good. But then, like, when you've got someone that's just like, nah, I'm actually doing this on purpose. To be able to sing like that and make auto-tune make you sound like that, you've got to be able to do something. And people do eventually go back to source, don't they? They do mm -hmm. go back to source. Like, yeah. not... I saw so who was it? Head, it was not Heady one. I think I remember who it was that it got uh, oxide of neutrino on a tune as well. I forget the name. I don't know which one. That but one but yeah, just the idea. But to go of, back, like you know, yeah, it's like it's like when Getz done a tune and bought Mega Man. On. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like because yeah, yeah. he's talking about Mega Man flow and he's even wearing a Mega Man style hat and it's like. I get that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, because... and I see gigs as well. Got Buster as well. Yeah, yeah, do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like all of that stuff like it that. It's like, around. yeah, it always does. Because actually, at some point, 
like you know like we're all still we're all still children inside regardless of how we look and at some point regardless of how good you are and how far it takes you at some point that little kid inside you is going to be like I mean, this was my favourite person ever. <laughs> Is there a way I can get my favourite person ever on it? Yeah, yeah. Can I get like, you know, like I can't, I can't speak for gigs, but in my head, I'm like, oh my God, I'm now to the point where I'm this big. Surely we can get Buster. <laughs> Surely we can get Buster. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There must be a way. Make like, my life complete. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, but it's yeah. like, it's like tick boxes, yeah. bruv. That's right, yeah. Like, yeah. What's your, who would yours be? Hmm. I mean, I, I got to do it, like, um, I got to do that, like, and for me, it was a tune, uh, I made a tune called Hat Low, probably, like, over a decade ago now, but I managed to get Fallacy and Skinny Man on it. Oh, that was... That, 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 like, Together? Yeah, on the same track, and I actually, I mean, like, it was hard work, mate. It was hard work catching them two, bruv, catching <laughs> them two's, like, yeah, yeah, being yeah. out in a big, wide ocean with yeah. the tiniest little fishing yeah, rod, and yeah, you're yeah, trying yeah. to catch them killer whites, I bruv. Like, no doubt about it. Like, How tight to them, man? Of tight, skinny, Ooh, big fouls, like damn right. But like you know, that for me, that was like you know, and and like I've done that, and yeah, there probably is like maybe some more here and there. But I think after that one, I was like, yeah, nah, yeah. like I'm good, yeah, yeah. I'm good, because it was like we that was that was one. amazing for me sure. because like you know, like Fallacy's album Black Market Boy. When oh. did that come out? I come out like beginning of the two thousands, yeah, <laughs> and and he had. He had jungle drum and bass. He had garage. He had hip hop. He had sort of like a reggae mm. style bashment mm. on it. He mm. had like in what I consider to be the DNA, the blueprint yeah. of what is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He made that album twenty years I ago. I find it un unfathomable that the idea of that not having done better than it did. I mean, do you know what I'm saying? But actually, it was at the time because yeah. at that time, ahead of his time, it was so ahead of his yeah. time. And I've spoken to him about it. I was like, bro, the album's the DNA, bro. Mm. That's the blueprint. Because mm. you watch everyone that's come out like mm. since that's added all of them mm. elements, and it's like my man done that. Mm. <laughs> like, mm. He was like because in my eyes, he was so deep into vibes mm. and it's like you know i mentioned all of them things in all the stuff that makes me like but mm. like you know he was like that is a representation of uk yeah and he was into it he was into every i remember him being Fully. at dmc's i've seen and, him you know. flipping like just like you know gone up to manchester and he's like yeah bruv we're going to this house night you got shoes i'm like you know i ain't got yeah, shoes yeah yeah yeah, so yeah. Don't worry, i saw it out like oh, like do you know what i'm saying and it's like but that's but that's like you know, my man was like, he is, he is the 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 DNA for all of that. So mm. far ahead of his time. Yeah, if you put, if you're talking council state of mind, big up skinny on of all course. levels. Right. You've got to put Black Market Boy in there yeah. as, of in terms of levels of just levels of vibes and yeah. representing UK. Yeah. Like you know, skinny represented the estate like fully and hard, and then Fowls for me, he represented. Um, just every part. He represented every part of club life. Mm. He was the backdoor club life. He, he was the grit that was, was going club on. Club life. Yeah. That, that that whole album there is yeah. UK club life. Yeah. And actually, in every single flavor that he that he like stepped in in every single one of them clubs, because at that point they were all separate entities. They were, yeah. Like at that point, every one of them you go in is no merchants. There shit, was yeah. no none of that. What? That's right. Like, you might be lucky to have a room of something that's close to what's in the main room as a side room. <laughs> But there was no, like, Nothing. you wouldn't have got away with doing a, like, being a DJ, doing a set and starting off in one genre and going into another because yeah. they'd have taken you off. That's right. Because they wanted to hear what they wanted to hear. But for me, he was, he was, that, that, that project is, um, that is the backbone of UK club life. Mm. And like for me, UK club life is the child of UK dance music. Yeah. And and as much as people like, you know, want to be, whether you want to be flipping hardcore, flipping hip hop, rap, gangster rap, drill, grime, whatever, most of that stuff starts like in the dance. Mm. Like, and it is, it is a dance floor thing. It is a dance like, floor. Like, you know, thing. it's why I think loads of people get scared when they when they have these flipping like young drill crews come up and mm. they get scared because they see a bunch of like youth like go into it and fully letting loose and enjoying themselves. Mm. That scares people. It scares people. Because they're like, oh my god, they've all come together. Yeah. They're all in the same place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, yeah, they're getting on like you know they'll try and provoke it to make something happen so then yeah. they can close it down yeah. like but actually it's like 
it's 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 a unity, it's a unification. Yeah. Like it's all a of central these point, things isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it is. And and for me, UK dance music within itself, if you look at how much we've influenced the world to the point where yeah. in the last ten years, like some of the biggest um, artists, some of the biggest labels, they've come and they've been trying to cherry pick our producers for, for our sound because okay. actually like as much as as much as people can try and intimidate like um, mm. uh, no what's the word um, not uh, uh, not intimidate as much as people can try and um, uh, copy the styles mm. like that genuineness, mm. like UK has got a lot to answer for. Authenticity, That's yeah. the word, the authenticity. Right. We've got a lot to answer for. Like, and it kind of makes me laugh because there's two islands in the world that I see that have actually overly influenced like Western music mm. and between Jamaica and the UK, yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like yeah. the ripple effects of the yeah. influence is, is, is worldwide. 100%. Uh, worldwide. I, don't know, I don't know what's in our cereal, but for sure, like, yeah. I think they're thinking places where creativity can flourish, isn't it? Well, it's but it's also, um, I think it's also on the backbone of that whole sort of like b boy influence of, yeah, this is what I do and what, mm, yeah, and I don't care, yeah, this is what I do and this is how I do it. Like, how, how much does that play? Just on that note, how much of that plays into your head? Um, uh, King, uh, yeah, King of the Rollers is the latest, you know, of a of a of a number of things that are flying for you at the moment. Yeah. And how much, of, I know I know there's, I, I kind of know the answer to this, but just to clarify, Go on. you don't give, I, I'm B-boy, this is what I'm doing, this is how I am. I'm going on stage and yeah, I'm going to rock this drum bass. Like how much of that don't give a fuck influences you in those kind of movements that are just one of the same? It's, it's yeah, there, there is, there is like, it's it doesn't matter what stage, it doesn't matter yeah. where. And I think that's one of the things, like, I don't care if I make mistakes live. Mm. Like, because actually, it kind of gives me more intel to then just flip the whole scenario. Mm. Like, do you know what I mean? I kind of like that. Mm. Like, you know, it's like, it's like from, from, from like all my family being Jamaican and me having a heavy reggae influence behind everything, to the whole hip hop side of things, it's like, damn man, from when the turntable shuts down or one of the CDJs stops working and mm. the DJs are having a little panic and they look round and they're like, it's on emergency loop, bruv. <laughs> You've got to do something. It's like that that whole yeah. like it's that whole aspects of yeah. of like you never know what's gonna happen and how and when and where, but it's like, okay, shit's hit the fan. Better come up with something. She better, don't do, get... better do something to yeah. keep them all here. Better do something to make sure that like they're all cool. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? And that can be 30 seconds, it can be five, 10, 20 minutes. Like, you know, but that's the shit where you shut. That's the bit that I like anyway, yeah. where all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm of service. Let's go. <laughs> the spontaneity factor. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice having everything planned, whatever, whatever. But actually, like the only time you'll really come alive. Yeah. And, and, and really know all of the testing that you've tested yourself with yeah. is when their moments pop up and boy, you can, it's sink or swim. A man's a swimmer. Oh shit! <laughs> Tell you man, stop it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Explain that feeling. Uh, explain that feeling of being um, to such an abundance of crowd, and being in the moment that level of zen where there's a connectivity of so many people. What? Well, explain that feeling. Well, first of all, the first feeling is like looking like you know i've always got my eye on whoever i'm working with anyway like one eye on them regardless so from 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 when i've seen them have some kind of issue then i'm like oh, okay the brain starts ticking in from when everything's cut down it's like right okay like this is where now i am really the glue like because mm. because like when you're a front man mic man whatever you are you are the glue between the back setting and the front like, and you got to keep that glued. Mm. So, like, in my head, I'm looking around at them. I'm looking for sound engineers. I'm looking for everyone that's going to fix the problem as well as not knowing what I'm saying, but obviously managing to say something that's mm. keeping all the audience in front, like, in line. Not necessarily in line, but still keeping them there. Mm. Like, like, you know, and all of that, it's like, that's, it's, it's where, it's where, like... Chaos. It's, yeah, but actually, like, I thrive in chaos. Like, I thrive in the middle of chaos. Mm. Like, it's like uh, you get into that zone and places and it's actually, it's all subconscious. Mm. Like, when you're too conscious and you're trying to overthink it, that's when it all falls apart. Yeah. 
Like, from when you can get into that space where you're like, okay, God knows what's going to go on. Don't know how long they're going to be till they fix that. But you know what? Man's just going to kill some time and dead some things off yeah, right yeah. now and, and make sure everyone's kept, kept like, fully engaged. Like, you know, like, the amount of different things that are going through my head. Are the audience still there? Have we got a sound man? Have we got the technical staff to sort out what's going on? Have they sorted out what's going on? Are they going to have everything booted up again quick enough? Mm. Like, you know, am I utilising the whole of the stage? I need to make sure all the people from back there, from people over there to the front, line to the middle whatever am I keeping everyone in can I get them to all come in a little bit closer like we're gonna have like a little intimate like chat or are whatever. you taking notes <laughs> yeah lists <laughs> but like all of oh all God. of them all of them elements there like that's what's that's what like you know let alone like I have no idea what I say like like this is what makes me laugh I have people coming up to me that have listened back to sets or whatever and they're like oh bruv when you said this bit and I'm like bruv I don't have a clue what you're saying. And they're like, nah, like, but you say this here. And I'm like, I make it, I make 70% of it up. Mm. Because of that whole B-boy aspect and that whole, like, that whole, like, background training that I have had to get me to here, it's like, boy, well, do you know what? Like, pull all the elements away. Can yeah. you still stand? Can you still stand? Which, again, goes back to the raw elements of what your 10,000 hours are doing, being in a car park, Utilizing the the the, the minimum, everything, yeah, everything that's brought you up to that moment, like, cause that's cause uh, cause that's what it is, and actually, like, you know, from the flipping biggest stage to a one on one, like, mm. them elements should never leave you, mm. and you love it, yeah, yeah, because that because because that is the love, mm. and it's like when them spontaneous moments come up, it's like. I find I find more self gratification in them moments than a lot of stuff mm. because it's actually like ah oh, yeah no good we're still on track we're yeah. still we're all right we can still run it like yeah, you know send this I mean? one home boys <laughs> yeah yeah but, but that's what it is in it and it's like yeah yeah it's good yeah yeah so what's the future mm. oh god um, well you know we can't we can't predict the future but the the next evolution is um, a show called This Is Inja. So I've just had an album come out on Hospital Records called Smile and Wave. Oh, to Hospital Records. That's yeah. a bit too casual, just dropping that. Yeah, yeah. What's going on? It's come out, it's called Smile and Wave. And um, uh, I basically got to go over to New Zealand and Australia to do a tour over there, like during all the madness as More well. Gems, so man got lucky, out. man got lucky, yeah. I'm very fortunate, but hard work. Yes. Like, that's what it's about. So flipping, ended up over there. Ended up um, not with the DJ that I wanted to work with due to visa issues or whatever. And they were like, oh, so what are you going to do? I was like, I'll just do it myself. Like that whole B-boy aspect of, uh, hold, yeah, hold, hold, I know what mean, they're doing. Do you mean more specifically do it yourself? What, DJ? DJ and sing my songs all at once. So man done it, yeah, where I went over there and I'd done, I'd done like 17 shows with no headphones. Like, like AMC, big up AMC, big up Benny L, Turno, all the gang. Like, um... AMC like looked at my memory sticks because he's like a DJ champion and he was like oh yeah no you can set them up like this and I already knew about the cue points and everything so man like kind of had the sticks half set and I just basically uh, worked out how to DJ and sing my own songs and keep them mixed and blended for a whole hour um <sighs> To the point where it's now like, you know, I've got this thing called This Is Inja, which is like a show that I want to like roll out at some point where I just get to go and sing, sing like all my songs. It's mainly the drum and bass ones. But at some point, you know, when I start to go through all of the catalogs, like and like and like I work out that I can like actually interact with all of the different catalogs, then it's like it's going to be fun. But it's only ever my songs. Mm. So, I'll, so I'm not like trying to be a DJ and play other people's mm -hmm. music like the DJs do. I'll only ever sing my songs and play my songs but got so many of them that like man can feel bare oh, time and like yeah so, so I went sick. out there and I learned that but I learned it with no headphones so it was just like it's just like rags man singing a song like queuing up the next thing quick for, no that's not in time do whatever to make it in time <laughs> bring it back in still singing the song to the point where my head starts getting confused because I've got one song playing and I'm singing that song and then I start like getting the next one in and then I start like as well as musically blending the songs I start to blend the words of the two songs and then that starts getting my head real confused so I have to like take one of them out and then like <laughs> do you know what I mean but it's like uh, yeah it, it's just it's 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 a learning curve and it's back to everything about evolution and just being able to just be like do you know what it's that b-boy factor of yeah and what I think give it a go the coldest thing I've ever fucking heard is that you're 
queuing without any headphones and you're blending the record whilst blending your own vocal. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. While blending the vocal. It gets confusing, <laughs> bruv. I swear down. It That's does... like head pat, rub yeah, stomach Yeah, yeah, yeah. And shit. I can't even do that. <laughs> I can't. I've never been able to do that, bruv. But, like, but also as well, it's like, that's all part of the training. So when it, when it got to the point where I was just like, yeah, it's cool, I'll do that. Wow. People were looking around at me like, right, you can be able to do that. And it's like, fam, I've been watching all you, you lot my whole life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I understand yeah. the technique and I understand the formula. Yeah. Like, you know. Plus uh, my back's against the wall, motherfuckers, I'm doing it. Yeah, yeah. and I'm going to do it and I'm going to yeah. pull it off yeah. to the point where, like, someone turned around to me and was like, oh, yeah. Oh, it's, it's a bit sketchy what you're doing, isn't it? And I was like, no, nah, it's not sketchy. It's cheeky. <laughs> and I don't give a damn. And everyone's loving it. Yeah. Yeah. What's sketchy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing sketchy. Yeah. People are happy and entertained. Yeah, I'm yeah. an entertainer. A roller coaster is more fun when it's creaking. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you can hold on to that seat a little yeah. tighter. Yeah. Like, and when you finish, you feel like you've done something. <laughs> yeah, you do. You're like, I'm lucky to be alive yeah. right now. And I'm going to go get an ice cream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, but, like, that's the whole factor. It's like, yeah, you know, yeah. that's that. It's that. It's still down to that whole B boy factor of, I don't give a damn. Mm. I, I, I'll, I'll try it. It's, it's why I've been able to work in all the aspects that I've worked in because people are like, oh, yo, you're a vibes, man. You want to come catch a vibe on this? I'm like, yeah, let's give it a go. Mm. If it weren't my thing, it weren't my thing. But like, it, we always executed it well. And then you know, you work out what is on, what, what you like in your palette and what you don't. Mm. But the next evolution is this is Inja wow. because it's like, yeah, it, it's a thing. Like, yeah, and, 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 and it worked. And, like, I've only had a chance to do it twice um, since I've been back in the UK. But everywhere I've done it, people have bloody loved it. Man, I want to like, see this. Yeah. You have to keep us posted. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah, definitely. Bro, definitely, happily, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we'll draw a word up there before, you know... Grabbing the camera, grabbing the mic. Man, you are so multi-talented. It's fucking bonkers. But again, just going back to it, it's the 10,000 hours necessity meets um, tenacity. Yeah. But then also, we are we are all multi-talented. And like with that aspect of this whole new thing that I'm trying, which is, which is a part of my next evolution, it's like, if I'd have not been with all of the DJs and selectors yes. and watching them over time like yeah, yeah I've always had a little bit of fun when like I'm around someone's yard yeah. or whatever and they're like yeah go on jump on let's have a laugh and yeah. like you know like all of that like you know I've never taken never take anything too seriously mm. and just flipping like go and have some fun be there in spirit be yeah there. be there in spirit and if something don't work it'll be like, and what yeah. like you know you don't need to make no excuses for mm. it it's just like you just give it a go if you're not willing to roll the dice then don't try and play <laughs> like you've got to roll the dice, fam. Yeah. If you want to be involved, you've got to roll the dice. Sure, you've got, got to, the pot. You've got to get the ticket. Yeah. Like, you know, you can't be a part of something if you're not wanting to just dive in. And there's no point in dipping a toe in yeah, enough. You've kept a steady course where that rolling of the dice is concerned, yeah. brother. Yeah, you have. It's because I don't have any fear because I have that initial like b-boy factor of and what? Yeah. Like, come on, man. The first guy that put up his tag, it might not have been the best tag, but I'll tell you what, the joy that he got from doing that first one made him go blow up the whole street. <laughs> like, you know, and whether everyone else liked it or not, whether it got dubbed over straight away, whatever, yeah. like they got their moment, they enjoyed it and they're like, you know what? Next time I'm going to come better. Mm. Oh my God. Yeah, you're right. Create that itch. Yeah, you got him. You got to, man, because it's like, you know, mm. what else are you going to scratch if you ain't got no itch? It's your balls and that's just sweaty and boring. Yeah, yeah. monotony. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's that monotony, bro. But like, and the whole thing is, like, if you want to um, exist in a realm where you find happiness for yourself regularly, is that you've got to just be able to just let go and just flip and try, yeah. so try it. Yeah. Got to yeah. be able to try it. Happiness. Like, a lot mm. of the people that I, that I love the most that are, like crazy talented they've never really exposed like how truly talented they are mm. because there's a part of them that doesn't want them to let certain things off because it's like you know they might not want to be judged or whatever I don't know I don't know what like goes on mm -hmm. in their heads but all I know is like I know some of the most amazingly creative people and whether it's through personal fear self esteem they haven't got the right energies or vibes around them at the minute I'm like just got to put it out mm -hmm. like the only one the only person that that should be judging you is you mm -hmm. and if you're happy with it roll the dice man. yeah stop looking in your rear view lane man stop looking in your rear view mirror yeah. and thinking someone's coming there's there's it's 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 a more culture you gotta and not be afraid like you say put out there get it out just there. go for it 
Mm. Like because because ultimately, <coughs> what's the what's there to lose? And if you go for it and it don't work, then you know that don't work. Yeah, so, you life, know that's all right. Yeah, yeah. It's how okay many things? Well. How many times in life yeah. we find something that don't work? Yeah. And it's like, oh well. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, you just got to go for it. And on that note, Inja. Yes, <laughs> my guy. Thank you. Well, wicked way to end. A legendary conversation, I might add. You know what I mean? We've done a lot on the podcast over, over the years. But that was surely one of the most inspirational for Thank you. Peace. Thank you so much, Ginger. I'm happy to, man. Come on. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Killer Podcast, out like it was out of fashion. You know what it is, all right? Sharing is caring. Make sure you share away. You know, without that, we ain't got now, all right? Mm -hmm. so, uh, don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. There you go. So lucky, Ginger. Enough love, bro. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me, man. Peace. <laughs> Wicked. Mm.